Hi, my name is Peter Coffin, and apparently it is literally evil to say anything bad about products now. Ah, products. The automatically good thing that I can't figure out why anyone would ever say anything negative about. Welcome to pure evil. This video, uh, it's hell. I am Satan. And, uh, I'm here to usher in the end. You guys up there in the human world, you're all living in an age of innovation. And Marquez Brown Lee, my agent of destruction, is here to end your age of innovation. Thank you very much. So when I want to know what's going on inside business, I typically... I typically look at Business Insider, who tells us a popular YouTuber's negative video of Humane's AI pin raises questions about critical reviews in the age of innovation. Which, again, as Lucifer himself, I intend to end with my agent of destruction, the Antichrist, uh, Marquez Brown. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also the new worst product I think I've ever reviewed in its current state. There's just so many things bad about it. The worst product I've ever reviewed for now. Marquez Brownlee didn't mince words with the title of his review of Humane's AI pin. In a 25-minute video, Brownlee details all of the issues he's encountered using the AI device. Spoiler alert, there were a lot. Brownlee's review aligns with other criticisms of the device, but not all of those came from someone with as much sway. His YouTube channel has more than 18 million subscribers. So far, yes, Marquez Brownlee's reach is massive. He is much louder than the average person. It can be inferred that his words do have some kind of an effect. And it was inferred. One user on Twitter pointed that out, calling the review almost unethical for potentially killing someone else's nascent project in a post reposted over 2,000 times. So the definitely not biased in favor of business, business insider, <laughs> doesn't outwardly state an opinion itself. It says that people out there are raising questions about critical reviews in the age of innovation. Well, how convenient. Someone on Twitter expressed an opinion, and therefore Business Insider uh, can appear to remain neutral. Daniel Vassallo said on Twitter, I find it distasteful, almost unethical, to say this when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why, but with great reach comes great responsibility. Potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness. Poor humane, poor little, well-funded tech company. Whatever will Humane do with that $241 million they raised now that Marquez Brownlee has posted a pretty accurate review of their product? I think it's actually kind of distracting to like understand what the point of the device is as we go through it. So I'm gonna have to separate it out for this video. First, I'm gonna tell you what it is and what it's supposed to do. And then I'll tell you what my experience has actually been. Now this generated a bit of a backlash on Twitter for Mr. Vassallo, so much so that tech outlets were contacting him for comment. TechCrunch asked him for his thoughts regarding the amount of debate his tweet caused and why he feels it's important to defend the humane AI and its pin. He responded, Hi, many people thought I was defending humane or its product. I wasn't. My observation was about Brownlee's scale of influence and how that power deserves more rigor than the sensational headline on YouTube, the worst product I've ever reviewed. The power to crush a company shouldn't be taken lightly, and that headline is what most people will see. The actual review was fair and balanced. So correct me if I'm wrong, but he framed his opinion vaguely sensationally so that people would want to pay attention to it, and then somebody else took it as his whole opinion. You know, exactly what he did with Marquez Brownlee. Fun that he kicked up all that dust and got all that attention, though, right? That worked out well. So firstly, this is how your social media stuff is used. I mean, outside of all of the selling of your data. If you got something to say, and it helps with some business interest, you can bet your ass it's gonna get boosted. I mean, a number of tech outlets and companies all came together to say, hey, these individuals posting reviews on YouTube need to stop it. We here at Business Insider are just objectively stating our observation that people are saying something. 
It's not like Marquez Brownlee, an individual with no overhead whatsoever and a much larger reach, uh, represents some kind of a threat to these traditional legacy media outlets or anything. The last 10 years of our media landscape has been the traditional legacy media scrambling to find some way to make money as they appear less and less relevant when a personality that is seen by more people and is generally regarded as more useful than the access journalism that a lot of these outlets are built on top of. Access journalism, meaning journalism that prioritizes media time with important, rich, famous, powerful, or otherwise influential people in politics, culture, sports, and other areas over journalistic objectivity or integrity. In other words, outlets that are afraid to say negative things about products because they'll lose access to the companies that make them. This is a market incentive. It is a, a business interest for these outlets that gives them the ability to operate in the paradigm they operate. Without any kind of grand conspiracy, the mainstream media is incentivized to make capitalist propaganda, and that's what it does. And they've gone after Marquez Brownlee because he's willing to say what they are not willing to say. Now that we've talked about capitalist propaganda a little bit, we need to talk about why they need to propagandize us. These tech companies are trying desperately to create a new market. That's why we're getting stuff like the Humane AI pin. That's why we're getting stuff like the Apple Vision Pro. And I'm just going to say it. These are useless products. I've said this before, and I've gotten some defense from fanboys of either of these products telling me that this stuff is the future. But I would argue that these things are just trying to make it so you don't have to hold a phone to have a phone in your face somehow. All right, I can jack off to this. And I'll quickly demonstrate for you what the Humane AI pin does. The Humane AI pin is a $700 second phone that you put on your clothes. I don't think it's necessarily as heavy as the phone that I just taped to myself, but it is a machined piece of aluminum. And if you're walking or running around, you're going to notice that. Especially if you have tits. This, this is just going to like... They did not think of the boobed. I don't, I don't need that. But what these products are doing is just basically trying to be the phone somewhere else. Either directly in your face or smacking your tits. What's happened is the planned obsolescence model is becoming obsolete. As these tech companies have reached a ceiling in functionality, they're having to, in order to justify releasing a new phone every year, uh, make it more reliable and last longer. When performance is comparable on pretty much all of the phones, that's your main selling point. And the market was getting saturated anyway, most Americans have smartphones, but now they aren't upgrading those phones as much. In fact, most people are keeping phones for like three years now. For companies that put out phones every single year, that ain't good news. Now the Humane AI pin is a $700 device that requires its own $29 subscription. It does act as a phone, it can do text messages, but guess what? They are not linked up to your phone and your text messages. They are an entirely different phone. They're a second phone, another ecosystem, meaning if you pinned an Apple Watch to yourself, it would basically do everything that the Humane AI pin does, except for it would be linked into your phone's ecosystem, which is, of course, better. Like, I don't want to have to figure out which of the two phone numbers I need to text with people. And no, you are absolutely not going to replace your phone with the Humane AI pin. Both of these devices are just trying to make it so that you can use a phone without using your hands. Except for for both of them, you have to use your hands. For the Humane AI pin, you have to press a button, or if you want to look at the screen of it, you have to hold your hand here and it projects the damn thing onto your hand. And for the Apple Vision Pro, you're out crab pinching everything. These aren't new products, they're just putting a phone in your eyeballs or on your chest. 
And I ask that companies stop there as they seek new places on our body to stick phones. At no point do I want a smart device in me. I'm just going to say that. But this is why I think these products are being made, and obviously the incentives cause the media to go along with it. All I can say about Marquez Brownlee is I'm happy that he's willing to be honest about stuff. I'm sure that there are incentives that lean him towards access journalism, but it seems like he's staying honest, and I appreciate that as somebody who is critical of capital. Uh, even if you're just a consumer who is not sure if they want to spend $3,500 on a visor or $700 on a pin, it's good to see somebody who is able to get their hands on those products because they have the resources to, who is just willing to do it. And I hope Marquez stays honest. Um, I think that's all I've got for you today, but uh, what do you got for me? There's a whole comment section that you can just fill right up down there and lick the, the buttons, slurp on them, get them a nice blah, 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 become a subscriber, and uh, don't forget to money me at patreon.com slash Peter Coffin. You can watch my latest documentary if you got some time. Uh, if you got a little less time, maybe head on to one of my more recent shorter videos. I uh, hope you have a good day. Bye.